Motherboard. The motherboard is the foundation of your PC, the central board that connects everything. It doesn't just sit there, it's the communication hub. The CPU, graphics card, RAM, and storage all use it to send data back and forth. Without it, the rest of your hardware wouldn't even know each other exists. Every motherboard determines what you can and can't install. It decides which CPU socket you can use, whether you need DDR4 or DDR5 memory, how many M.2 SSDs you can plug in, and what kind of ports your system will have. There are also different sizes or form factors, like ATX, Micro ATX, and Mini ITX. Bigger boards have more expansion slots and features. Smaller ones save space but limit upgrades. Here's where it gets tricky. Even if two motherboards look similar, they're not always compatible. An Intel CPU won't fit in an AMD socket, and DDR5 memory won't fit in a DDR4 slot. The little notch on the RAM or CPU socket is there for a reason, to stop you from forcing something in and breaking hundreds of dollars worth of parts. Here's a real example. You buy a $400 Intel i7 CPU. Get home excited and realize your motherboard has an AMD socket. Congratulations, you just bought a $400 paperweight. Or you grab DDR5 RAM because it's newer and faster. But your board only supports DDR4. That's another $100 wasted. The motherboard is the bouncer at the club. It decides who gets in and who doesn't. And unlike a real bouncer, it won't give you a warning before rejecting your parts. Prices vary depending on features. Entry-level boards start around $100. Mid-range ones with good power delivery and ports land near $200 and high-end models with Wi-Fi, reinforced PCIe slots, and fancy RGB lighting can push $400 or more. But in most builds, you don't need to overspend, unless you plan to overclock or need very specific ports. Think of your motherboard as the stage. It doesn't get the spotlight, but every performance depends on it working flawlessly. CPU, Central Processing Unit. The CPU is your computer's brain. Every click, every calculation, every frame in a game goes through the CPU. But unlike your brain, which has one consciousness doing everything, modern CPUs have multiple cores. Think of them as separate brains working in parallel. Four cores? Fine for browsing and Netflix. Six to eight cores? Perfect for gaming and multitasking. Twelve or more? That's for people rendering 4K video or running simulations. Clock speed, measured in gigahertz, tells you how fast each core thinks. Higher sounds better, but a new 4 GHz CPU will destroy an old 5 GHz one because newer chips are just smarter. But here's the catch. CPUs generate heat, a lot of it. Without proper cooling, they'll slow themselves down to avoid melting. That's called throttling. GPU, Graphics Processing Unit. This is the heart of visual performance. It's the component responsible for everything you see on your screen. From simple animations in your browser to the explosions in a high-end game or the 3D layers in editing software. While the CPU is a master of general tasks, the GPU specializes in parallel processing, running thousands of tiny calculations at once to handle complex visuals. That's why modern gaming, video editing, and AI tools depend so heavily on it. Integrated graphics come built into many CPUs. Good enough for office work, video playback, or light gaming. But if you want smooth 3D games or fast rendering, you need a dedicated graphics card. These range from entry-level cards like the GTX 1650 to powerhouses like the RTX 4090. Performance scales quickly, but so does price. A $200 card handles 1080p gaming well. $500 gets you solid 1440p performance. $1,000 and above targets high-end 4K or professional workloads. Beyond gaming, GPUs also power AI, simulations, and crypto mining, back when that was a thing. But here's the mistake everyone makes. Pairing a $1,200 GPU with a $150 CPU. Your GPU is ready to render 4K at 120 frames per second, but your CPU is choking trying to keep up. That's called a bottleneck, and it's like putting a Ferrari engine in a Honda Civic. The car can't handle it, and your money is wasted. Balance matters more than raw power. A $500 GPU with a $300 CPU will outperform a $1,000 GPU with a $150 CPU every single time. Storage, hard drive, and SSD. The part that actually keeps your files, programs, and operating system when the PC is turned off. The hard drive, or HDD, has been around for decades. It stores data magnetically on spinning disks called platters. They're cheap, reliable, and come in massive capacities. Perfect for backups, movies, or game libraries. The trade-off? They're slow. Booting Windows from an HDD feels like watching paint dry. 
You click something and wait. Then, wait again. Hard drives usually spin at 5400 or 7200 RPM. The faster the spin, the quicker it reads and writes data. But even the fastest HDD can't compete with modern solid-state drives. No spinning disks, no moving parts, just pure speed. It's the single biggest upgrade you can make to an old computer, and it's not even close. There are a few types. SATA SSDs are the older, slower kind. Still fast, but limited by the same connection used for hard drives. Then there are NVMe SSDs. You'll also see different physical sizes. The 2.5-inch SATA SSD looks like a small hard drive, while the M.2 NVMe is a slim stick that slots right into your motherboard. Performance-wise, an M.2 NVMe can reach 7,000 megabytes per second read speeds, while a SATA SSD caps around 550 megabytes per second. Prices have dropped massively. A 1TB SATA SSD costs around 40 bucks, while a 1TB NVMe is about $60 to $80. The best setup? A combination. SSD for your operating system and most used apps, and HDD for big files or archives. Fast boots, big storage, no compromises. RAM. Random access memory. It's where your computer stores data it's using right now, so it doesn't have to constantly fetch it from the much slower storage drive. Think of it like desk space. The bigger your desk, the more projects you can have open at once without shuffling papers around. 8 gigabytes? That's a small desk, fine for email and YouTube. 16 gigabytes? Standard desk, handles gaming and most work. 32 gigabytes? Executive desk, video editing, heavy multitasking, no problem. 64 gigabytes or more? You're running a server or doing professional 3D work. Here's the thing. Once your desk is big enough, adding more space doesn't help. A 64 gigabyte desk won't make Chrome load faster if you're only using 10 gigabytes. Speed also plays a role. RAM is measured in megahertz, like 3200 megahertz or 6000 megahertz. Faster RAM can improve performance, but only if your CPU and motherboard support it. AMD's Ryzen processors, for example, benefit more from higher memory speeds than Intel's. Right now, DDR4 is still the most common type, while DDR5 is the new standard for next-gen systems. DDR5 offers high bandwidth and lower voltage, but it's pricier and only supported by newer CPUs and boards. Price-wise, a 16GB DDR4 kit runs about $40 to $60, while DDR5 of the same size can range from $80 to $120. And remember, RAM has to be installed correctly. Most motherboards require you to use specific slots for dual-channel operation, which doubles memory bandwidth. Putting the sticks in the wrong slots means you're losing performance without realizing it. Mixing different speeds or brands of RAM is another mistake. It usually works, but everything runs at the speed of the slowest stick. It's like a classroom where the slowest reader sets the pace for the entire group. Everyone has to wait. Cooling fan the unsung heroes that keep temperatures under control. The cooler, whether air or liquid, is what keeps your PC from cooking itself. Air coolers use a metal heat sink and fan to pull heat away. Proper airflow also matters. A case packed with RGB lights but poor ventilation will still overheat. Two fans pulling air in and one pushing it out will do more for performance than any expensive liquid loop in a hot cramped case. Fans come in different sizes, most commonly 120 mm and 140 mm. Bigger fans move more air with less noise, while smaller ones can spin faster but tend to get louder. Many modern cases include fans already, but adding more can drastically improve performance, especially for gaming rigs or systems in warm rooms. You can control fan speeds manually or through your motherboard's BIOS, setting profiles for quiet operation when idle and high performance under load. Noise, airflow direction, and dust filters all matter. A system that runs cool, lasts longer, and stays stable under pressure. And while RGB fans look flashy, just like RGB RAM, they don't actually make your PC faster. PSU, Power Supply Unit. This one often gets ignored, but it's one of the most important parts of your system. And if you cheap out here, you risk random shutdowns. Or worse, frying expensive parts. And yes, that actually happens. Cheap PSUs have been known to catch fire, send voltage spikes through motherboards, and turn $2,000 builds into paperweights. There are Reddit threads full of people who saved 30 bucks on a no-name PSU and lost $1,500 in components. Don't be that person. Get an 80-plus gold-rated unit from a reputable brand. It's not exciting, it's not flashy, but it's the difference between a PC that lasts 5 years and one that dies in 6 months. Power supplies are rated in watts, typically between 500 and 1,000 for most desktop builds. 
The exact number depends on your components. Higher-end CPUs and GPUs demand more power. Tools like online PSU calculators can help you estimate what you need. You'll also see efficiency ratings like 80 plus bronze, silver, gold, and platinum. These measure how much power is wasted as heat. Gold-rated PSUs hit the sweet spot for most people. Efficient, reliable, and affordable. Modular PSUs let you detach unused cables for a cleaner build, while non-modular ones have every cable permanently attached, which can make cable management messy. A good PSU might not boost performance directly, but it guarantees stable voltage and protects your investment. It's the silent hero of every system, doing its job quietly in the background so everything else can shine. Of course, all these parts need a home, and that's where the PC case comes in. Your case is more than a metal box. It's your cooling system's foundation. A good case has space for multiple fans, cable management routing, and dust filters. A bad case chokes your components and makes upgrades a nightmare. As for RGB lighting and tempered glass, that's personal preference and it won't make your PC faster. But if you want your setup to glow like a spaceship, go for it. Just don't sacrifice airflow for aesthetics. Sizes vary. Full towers fit large motherboards and extra fans. Mid towers are the most common balance of size and space. And small form factor cases squeeze everything into compact setups for minimalists. Good airflow is key. Cases with mesh fronts and space for intake and exhaust fans keep temperatures low. Glass-fronted designs might look clean, but without proper ventilation, they can trap heat fast. Cable management matters too. A case with hidden routing paths and tie-down points keeps things tidy and improves airflow. It's the kind of small detail that makes building and maintaining your PC much easier. As for looks, RGB lighting, tempered glass, and clean aesthetics are popular, but they add no real performance. It's entirely about taste. Some builders want their case to glow like a gaming spaceship. Others prefer a quiet, professional setup. Both are valid. A solid mid-range case runs around $80 to $120, while budget options start near $50. Just make sure it fits your components and has decent cooling potential. Form should follow function, always. So there you have it. Every major component explained simply. When you put all these parts together, you don't just have random hardware. You have a living system. The motherboard connects everything. The CPU thinks. The GPU renders. The storage keeps your files. The RAM holds active tasks. The power supply powers it all. And the case and fan keep it cool. Now, if you're ready to actually buy these parts and want to skip the endless review rabbit hole, I've got you covered. In the description below, I've linked to the best rated components in every category, updated with current prices and products so you're not looking at recommendations from six months ago, when half the stuff is out of stock or overpriced. Click any of those links, and if you end up buying something, anything, doesn't even have to be a PC part. It helps support the channel at no extra cost to you. I also added a link to the best pre-built PCs if you'd rather skip the building process entirely. It's a fun experience once, but not everyone wants to spend three hours cable managing. Now here's the thing. You just learned what's inside your PC, but there's one component we didn't dive into, your monitor. Because what's the point of building a beast of a PC if you're staring at a screen that can't keep up? That's exactly what we're covering next. All the panel tech explained in plain language. Click the video on screen right now, and I'll see you there.